Jolie here, four seconds out with Grim Sickers back in Birmingham, back at the studio, and we're back to talk more boxing this week. It's specially Fight Camp Week 2, so we'll obviously go through things that happened in Week 1, talk about Eddie moving to the zone and what we saw that was different from when he was on Sky. Um, so yeah, this is Fight Camp Week 2 only, and we're going to talk every fight on the card. What what uh, the fights mean to each fighters? Um, obviously, the main event: Jazza Dickens, Kid Galahad, the rematch. Kid Galahad winning the first one. But first of all, how are you, man? Couple of weeks since we've had you on the channel. Yeah, yeah, I'm good, man. It's in the studio recording. It's good to have you part of the sessions as well, man. So just just making music. Got a project coming out in September. So just working really. And you've had a tune come out a couple of weeks ago, actually, just after the last interview. Talk yeah. to us about that. How yeah, well it's doing. Man, true to you, man. Different sound. Just trying to evolve as artists, man. The usual stuff, man. You got a different sound to that one as well, like yeah. more of a singy kind of sound. What is that something you're aiming for? I know you got a project project uh, coming. Yeah, you know what it is, bro. I'm just trying to evolve as an artist, uh, try different things. Everyone knows me for Graham, but I feel like I'm more of a musician and a bit more musical than people might think of me. So I'm just trying to show my true talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, talking about talent, the Dazone talent. Yeah. <laughs> the first week, yeah. uh, I blended that one all right. To be fair, yeah. Laura Woods, Maya Jammer. I want yeah. to know what you think of the new cast. Um, Laura Woods first. Laura Woods is amazing, man. I've been listening to her on TalkSport and I always thought she was good. She holds her own and I think for 2021 is great things, man. I think she's probably one of the best pundits around. She surprised me. She holds her own and she's probably one of the best that do it, man. Yeah. I think she's amazing, yeah. We'll, we'll skip past, past the commentary team because everyone expected them to do well. Yes. Darren Barker, Chris Lloyd, Andy Lee. That, they, I was confident they were going to do well. Yes. And then Maya Jammer, what, how well do you think she did in her first week? I thought she did amazing, man. For someone that don't know boxing too well, she held her own. Obviously, it's a bit awkward when Tony Bellew, Bellew is going in depth, but what can you expect? He's not going to go light because she's working there. Do you know what I mean? So she done well, man. I'm sure she'll get better as the weeks go on as well. And the week is about to become, well, the second week is yeah. about to happen at Fight Camp. Um, obviously, as I said, main event, Jazza Dickens, Kid Galahad. Let's start with that one because yeah. they fought before. Uh, Jazza Dickens is in sensational form. So is Kid Galahad. Yeah. He probably should have been a world title uh, holder since they last fought. Yes. Do you think he beat Josh Ryanson? I did, but he didn't steal it from Josh. I think That's he won. Yeah, he didn't steal it. So I get it, but really, you sh yeah, I, we, he won. Mm -hmm. Nicked it, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the first fight... A long while ago yeah, now, but do you think that's going to have any impact on them? Nah, man, I think Jasper Dickens has, has gone. And can I, can I say, Tony Belly is brainwashing me. <laughs> because, yeah, he's making me, like, I thought Galahad had it easy. But he's brainwashing me to think it's a 50-50 fight. I didn't think it was a 50-50 fight, but now I do think because Tony Belly drilled it in. But I still think Galahad has got a bit too much for Jasper Dickens, man. Yeah, I think it's probably the closest fight um, in terms of a main event. I think the one we saw this weekend yeah. was, I had it in, going into the fight, I thought it was 70-30, you can. Obviously, Lee would won that, but in terms of the headlines, I think Buatzi will comfortably beat Balotnitz. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and Jazza Dickens versus Kid Galahad is the closest. Maybe it is Tony Bell, but I genuinely think Dickens is, his mentality as well, we spoke to him, we spoke to him on the zone launch day, and he's just, he's so relaxed, I don't think he lets pressure get to him. And obviously, he's had losses as any sportsmen and women should. Um, we saw with Leewood, he's had a loss yeah. uh, to Jazza Dickens, yeah, 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 and then yeah. he's come back to beat oh, Kanju. Yeah. So um, it's ve very interesting, very 50 50. Do you have a prediction, a round, or anything you think that's going to end? I in? think uh, so. The 12 rounds, I don't think Galahad will stop him. I think outboxing, I'm impressed with Gal Galahad because he trains hard. I, don't, I, I know I'm not saying Jazza Dickens don't train hard, but I'm hearing that Galahad's one of the hardest trainers in the sport. And where he's got the win uh, over him already, it's a bit, bit like a one 0 already, man. Yeah. But Jazza Dickens, man, I'm like he beat Lee Woods. So I think he's it's more of 50-50 now, I think. But I'm going just Galahad, I think. Yeah. Um, I would have thought Ebony Bridges was coming into the studio. You got pink, you got pink on today. Um, I know she likes wearing pink. Uh, bikinis, all of that stuff. She gets a lot of stick for that, but she markets herself well. She's fighting Beck Connolly, yeah. um, who's well known in the sport of boxing, especially in women's boxing. Swindon. Yeah, okay, yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, so talk yeah, to yeah. me about that fight. Do you know Beck Beck very well? Yeah, yeah. I don't know her very well, but I know of her. Man, she's tough. Credit to the sport, man. Obviously, I don't think she'll win, but I want to say big up, man, because she's from Swindon, so I'll be supporting her anyway, man. And talk to me about Ebony Bridges, obviously coming off a loss to Shannon Courtney, but what a fight that was, and she's made a name for herself. Now. I think she's got a great brand, man. Good looking girl, got a brand model now, but it works though, man. It brings fighters in, man, so, and she can fight. She could fight better than I thought she would. So, yeah, I think it's a good little scrap, man. It's, it's a huge debate because a lot of people will say um, marketing yourself just by looking good, wearing yeah. push up bras or yeah. whatever it is. 
Um, it, it's, it will negatively impact women's boxing because then you've got people who only tune in to see that. And then when you have the, the best boxing in the world, they're not as bothered because they don't get their, their tits out or whatever in the way. And so do you think the fact that she's doing what she's doing is good for the sport? Personally, I, I can see the positives, but I know a lot of people can't. I can see the positives because she can actually box. It's not like she's getting in there making a fool of herself, man. I think she can actually box. Yeah, so she's good, but I think she's a rare case. I don't think everyone can do what Ebony Bridges can do. I think she's a rare case, man. So I, th- I, th- I think we need her in women's boxing as well. I think everyone's seen that as well. Obviously, she signed to Matt True. Yeah. I think she's with Mel, uh, the PR, oh, yeah. um, who's obviously very high up. She PRs Tyson Fury. So she's got good connections after that fight, and I yeah. think it can only go onwards and upwards for her. Yeah. Um, we've also got Ellie Scottney. Do you know much about her? She's obviously, Not too much. She's looked very impressive in a fight so yeah. far. On the website currently, the Matchroom website, it doesn't have an yeah, opponent, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I think it will be another win for her. Yeah, I mean, I think it'll be an easy win for her. I've only seen her box one more, one time before. Don't know too much. I can't say too much, but I'm more than happy to be intrigued in the, the women's boxing. I think it's getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. So shout out to Eddie Hearn for growing, growing the women's side of boxing as well. 100%. You've also got Sam Jones, his very own, Johnny Fisher fight, and Danny Whitaker. Um, four wins, three losses, zero KIs for Johnny uh, for Danny. And obviously Johnny, two wins, two KOs, no losses. I think it's another fight in the right direction for Johnny and um, good card to be on. I love Johnny Fisher, man. I think he's like, uh, he's a a prospect for like maybe three or four years. He'd be a big name in the heavyweight. He's an intelligent guy, knows what he's doing. Very impressed with him. He beat Phil Williams last time. He's also from Swindon, my hometown. Very impressed with him, very young. Raw, tender. It's got a long way to go, man, but I can see the potential in Johnny Fisher as well. Yeah, it's definitely raw, but I mean, he's he's literally 2-0. and And I think um, in his first fight, as everyone in their pro fight, they have a little bit of a nervy start, a bit too much energy. But that's not even no. that's not even a criticism. It's just yeah. so natural. Um, and I think with Sam, he's, he's going to be managed really well. Sam knows how to get people in the right fights at the right time. Definitely. He's obviously got Solomon, who's also, um, yeah, also very early, early on in his pro career. Um, so that's gonna be that's gonna be a good fight. We've also got Akib Fiaz, um, who's gonna yeah hopefully have a decent fight. I'm not sure the opponent yet either, yeah, yeah, cool. but um, yeah, unfortunately. But I think another win for him. I know he's with Carl Frampton, obviously. Um, Jamie, what's his name? Moore. He's from, Jamie Moore. I know, I do know yeah, his no, name. It's just slipped my head. But, um, yeah. Akib Fiaz, do you know much about him? Yeah, yeah, I've been impressed with him. I think Jamie Moore and Carl Frampton got a good camp over there. I think it's another easy win for him, but I like, I like to see him step up soon, though. You know what I mean? I think he's got a talent if he can go up as well. What did you make of the fans at Fight Camp? I know it's £750 a ticket. Yeah, Do you think it needs to happen every year? Because it looked good, but if fans are back fully, as, as good as a spectacle it is, if you're a promoter, I don't think you're making as much money with... I know you're selling a lot more expensive tickets, but yeah. they're still only, what, 2000 or something? I like it. And it's so so good in the pandemic, and I'd be I wouldn't be frustrated if it happened every year. I really like it, but from a business perspective, I don't know if that will be the case if, yeah. if everything goes back to normal. Would you pay seven fifty for a ticket? Not me, if but two thousand people will. Two thousand people yeah, will. I think more than that would work. But if you had a spare, I think like what when I seen on like on Coogan Snap, I saw the pizzas. The chicken donuts. It's all right, man. There's a free bar as well. You probably outdo the seven bills. So yeah. I had to spare. My fingers. I think it's good. I think it's for and it's aimed for. A different crowd, do you know what I mean? So yeah, man, I think it, it, it's, it's positive still. And then we've got Nick Webb, Fabio Wardley. That's probably the biggest um, fight on the card in terms of it being a 50-50, obviously a domestic dust-up. We saw Tommy McCarthy, Chris and smith That was kind of sim- similar in terms of both fighters going yeah. into the fight. Nick Webb's come off the biggest win of his career. Fabio yeah. Wardley's come off a good win against Eric Molina. Uh, but, I, mean, um, I, think that's a dodgy, I think that's a dodgy win against Aaron Willey. It went down a bit too easy. But, yeah, he looked like he just wanted the money, the one in the paycheck, and he, he literally, oh, awesome. when he went down, I mean... He was doing all right. He was doing all right against Fabio. I'm not saying Fabio would have won, but the way Molina won out, I will never respect him as a fighter again. It's the biggest, it was the biggest test of Fabio's career, but I think to go to a Nick Webb from uh, Eric Molina is the perfect... Perfect name now because he didn't look too impressive yeah, against yeah. Eric Molina. And I think if Eric Molina turned up to fight, as uh, as you'd say, then I think he could have been. It could have been a bit of a different night. Maybe not a loss for Fabio, but yeah. something kind of similar to the. Maybe not similar to David Adler because I personally think he lost, but a bigger test than it could have been. I think Eric Molina wasn't really in it that night. Would you? Yeah, agree? Yeah, I would agree, man. I would love to see the winner fight. Um, oh my God, Dave Allen. 
Yeah, yeah, because Nick Wise already flattened didn't Nick Wise, man. Dave Allen in the first five-year awards game, man. I think that'd be a good, I good, I good fight. I spoke to Dave Allen and he didn't actually talk about Alan Babic next. He said he'd love to fight an Alan Babic because obviously he's on that card. This was in Sheffield, so like a month ago now. Um, he teased it. I don't know if it's going to happen. Yeah. But if... Uh, Dave Allen was to come back onto sort of the domestic scene that would be unbelievable I want him to get a title before he retires British title um, maybe not British maybe an English or a, a Southern just somewhere yeah. somewhere where he can get a not a comfortable win but everyone loves to see him out in the ring a moment yeah. for him definitely and, and with Dennis Hobson as well I think the fight's August tw- 25th he's returned yeah. and he's just gone off social media yesterday actually so Did I'm he? looking forward to that oh, yeah be, so Alan Babich versus Mark Bennett yep the last fight to talk about. Yep. Alan, I think, to the win. Man. I'm, impressed with, I'm impressed with Babich, but do you know what the truth is? I think he can go down to cruiserweight, you know. I think he's a bit too small for heavyweight for getting with the big boys, but Alan Babich, I'm impressed with him. I love his brand. I'm intrigued by him, man. Like, I don't think he's going to go like far, far in the game. I think there's a, like, a ceiling for him. But I'm What's honest, the ceiling? The ceiling is about Huey Fury. Huey Fury, like, okay. Then. So just below world. Yeah, just below. Well, I know Huey Fury's on the big things, but I don't think he'll beat Huey Fury. So I think, I think that's the gatekeeper for him. But I, I love his ride, man. I think he's got a great brand. The way he, I'm, I'm a fan just from the way he interviews and press conferences. So yeah, I like, I like Balich. Yeah, he's really awkward fighter, but entertaining to watch. Yeah, and you know what? Like the way he dealt with Tom Little, and I love Tom Little. It was impressive for me. I thought Tom Little was it was it was a fifty fifty, but he you convinced dealt convinced me that. Tom Little. But in fairness, yeah. I don't think he was. I don't think he was ever going to win that fight. Um, but in, I'm the same with you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think going into it, I was. I was convinced Tom Little had a chance. Yeah, it's me too, but Babbage, big up, man. I'm part, I'm part, I'm part of the roller coaster, bro, man. Who's he calling that? Who's he want? Hergovic? Yeah. I tell you, nah, not, 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 not that far. Not that yeah. far. Not, no, never. Yes. They never get it, man. But he's tough, though, man. But he, if he, when he meets a puncher, man, he takes too many punches. When he meets a puncher, he'll, he'll feel it, man. There's some huge names for Babbage, I think. I mean, I like the guys kind of over at Frank Warren's side, of, unfortunately. But the David Adelaide, the Nathan Gormans, just the yeah, yeah, yeah. different different styles. But I know that's going to be I less can, likely can I because... Of, no, I think Gormans a bit underrated, man. I like the way people... Like, he had, obviously he gets to do one. Well, he was going, going through some... Going through his baby and, and stuff. I know what's going through. But Gormans a better boxer than people get credit yeah. for, man. He's a good boxer, man. I think people need to put a bit more respect on Gorman's name. Man. And a lot of... Stuff's been made about his weight, but he's going to lose it all yeah, so, sooner rather than later. It'll be gone. I'm, I'm confident of that, and I think he'll be back to a good level. Listen, the Dubois fight, he he wasn't yeah, he wasn't yeah. there. It wasn't him, 100 percent Nathan Gorman that night. But he's fought since, and I think give it a year or two, he should be fighting. Not even a year or two, he could go in with a he could go in with a Babich. Why not? Yeah, Why not? Sure. If I, I think he'll beat Babich. Sure. Dude. Much better boxer than Babbage. Nathan Gorman's a beautiful boxer, you know. His it's, it's, it's jabs, his it's footwork, he's a great. But he's not like Tyson Fury, but it's the style he's similar, man. In and out, man. I think Nathan Who do you think he could fight? Who? Gorman. Adelaide. He, he, he needs to, he, he needs to shut up Adelaide, man. Because Adelaide's yeah. on to him. I was going to let man be on to you like that in the game. I was going to say that, but Adelaide, he got a knockout win um, two weeks ago. Yeah, but the one before but, that... He but he won. lost the one before that. He needs to rematch him before yeah, yeah, he did win fighting win. anyone but near the Nathan Gorman level. So he definitely needs that rematch. But, um, yeah. Yeah, man, I think Adelaide, I think Adelaide's a good prospect. I did think he lost the other fight. It was a bit, obviously, he got the decision, but... He learned he's young as well, man. You don't want to be too hard on Adelaide as well, man. But Adelaide is chasing Gorman. I'd love to see that by the end of the year. Gorman, you're not too big for Adelaide. You think you are. But that'd probably be your biggest fight since you are, bro. I honestly, if Adelaide goes and gets that win, a comfortable win against um, the person he basically he lost yeah, against, yeah, 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 I would be happy to see him fight yeah, Gorman. Because yeah, even if he lost, it's not a big problem. We saw, like I, I keep saying, Lee Woods anyway. lost before. Yeah, He's yeah, lost to Jazz the Dickens. People yeah, would have yeah, written him off yeah, for his whole career. He didn't have the best time at the Ingle Gym, but he's literally had the biggest night of his life. Headline the first card on the zone at fight camp. Like, boxing doesn't have to be about staying undefeated. Yeah, and can I just say, Warrington would have had a touch against you, can if if the understood unified thing happened, bro, you would have had a touch when no one is they was raging to fight him. But yeah, but losses in boxing don't mean nothing, bro. Not not Mayweather made it look like it was something. Yeah. But look at Joshua, man, come back, beat Ruiz. He's Dean and White. I thought it don't mean anything, man. Yeah, no, completely. And just off the back of what you just said, I think Warrington would have been kicking himself watching oh, that on man. Saturday night. Imagine, all right, imagine this year, Warrington's got 
fights Lara. If he wins, he's not even world champ, bro. Like all your all, all the people that have surrounded you are world champs, bro. Like Lee Woods or Dickens or flipping Gallagher. It's gonna be weird for a minute. So yeah, hundred percent. I think if I was to say to anyone, the fight to watch out for is definitely Fabio Wardley versus Nick Webb. Yeah, I think Wardley wins. Either. Um, Nick Webb lost to Dave Allen. That's the sort of one that everyone remembers. Yeah, but that was a good punch. Yeah, yeah, no, of course, but. His win earlier on, no, was, was it on the agent? No, it was Dillian White Povetkin yeah, to win the card, wasn't it? Um, yeah, it was a great win. I think that's probably the card Who to watch out for. He's changed down in Brighton, Pfeiffer. Yeah, yeah, is it Pfeiffer? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, he's trained down in Brighton um, with the team Tommy Welsh, yeah, Scott Welsh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Scott Welsh. Um, Chris, obviously, Eubank Jr. is there. Idris Virgo is there. Um, and they've been speaking very highly of him. And uh, that's probably the fight to watch out for. Co-main event, similar to yeah. Billum Smith versus McCarthy. Cool. Well, thanks for your time today. Hopefully this time again next week, we'll be talking um, Fight Camp 3. Um, Bwatsi versus Blackness, which I'll be going to as well. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, fight Camp 1, though, yeah, as we've just discussed at the start, really good improvement. The production was like literally another level. Uh, it got me more excited, even though, like, for example, uh, a fight on Sky, so say Warrington, Lara won. I was excited yeah. for it. I like Just Warrington, whatever. But with the DAZN boxing show with Ada and Tony Bell, you like, they get behind the scenes, they make it more Lovely. exciting. And it's genuinely, like, it's so much more enjoyable. Even the fights on the night, just because they've got Laura Woods backstage, they've got Ali Drew uh, doing, like, roaming interviews. Yeah. Like, I think it's... It's so good. Do you feel like they picked like the best? Like they got Rob Tebbett from Boxing Social, Ade from Talksport, um, Ali from Seconds Out, bro. Like they just picked everyone, yeah. put them together, man. It's, it's like an Avengers, man. It's crazy, man. Big up Eddie, man. Hey, yeah. get Joe Lee on there, man. <laughs> Joe, Lee's the Joe, Joe Markovsky. Yeah, fair yeah. play to him because I know he's had a big impact on like yeah. the look of it. No, of course Eddie. Eddie yeah, literally yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is the is the boss of match room, so he would have had a lot of. Um, impact on that as well but yeah thanks for your time today Cheers, we'll be talking fight camp free next monday and uh yeah speak to you soon